Now, let me explain how to implement this hydroelastic analysis in Moses. Here is the overall procedure for the analysis. First, we need to prepare two models, one for the boundary element method, I mean hydrodynamic pressure calculation, and the other for the finite element solver. And then, we need to run the hydrodynamic analysis and also eigen analysis to calculate the assumed mode with the natural frequencies. For your reference, the word in the parenthesis here, uh, which has a different point, means the Moses command for each analysis. So to enter the hydrodynamics menu, a hydrodynamics solver, we need to type in hydrodynamics in Moses. And then at the fourth step, uh, we need to go into the frequency response menu to update motion areas and other uh, subsequent analysis based on statistics. I mean, stochastic analysis. Or we can learn the time domain simulation. At each time step, applied loads uh, will be updated through modal superposition technique so that body deformation inertia, I mean, the elasticity of the floaters is considered. Uh, last step is the post-processing of the result. With Moses post-processor, we can find the statistical result from the fluid of simulation result. Also, structural code checking is available. SAX post and SAX fatigue is integrated with Moses as a Moses post and fatigue. And SAX joint can will be integrated in the near future. If you want more details, uh, click here on the screen. I prepared another video here. Anyway, let me explain each step in detail from next slide. Let me take an example of the semi for floating wind structures. The model on the left hand side here is the panel model to feed the boundary element solver. To create this kind of panel model, we can use this Moses modeler. This modeler came from uh, the software MaxSurf, but we need a lot of features to make it fit into Moses. I mean, this is a, a GUI modeler, very intuitive uh, GUI modeler. And to create uh, this kind of a structural model, on the right hand side here, we can use Moses preset. Uh, as you may know, uh, this is came from uh, this came from SAX preset. Also, we prepare models for both solvers. We need to place them at the same location to make them communicate. For hydroelastic analysis, this is all you need to do. However, for your reference, if your purpose is the structural analysis of the hull. You need to care about the differences in mass densities. What I mean is, panel size is determined by wavelengths. So, the size of panels are larger than the size of the structural masses, I mean structural plates. This could be the problem that applied forces from panels are concentrated at specific joint when the pressure are mapped onto the structural joint. In this case, Moses has a command named n pen pix. If we issue this command after importing the model, Moses automatically identifies the location of the structural joint inside the panels and then generate points inside the panels. This is to distribute the pressures to all structural joint so that the pressures are not concentrated to specific joint. This is the result of the, this, uh, this npm pix command. Here, the name of the panels is listed. Name of the panels is listed. And these are the structural joints inside the panels. The next step is to learn the hydrodynamic analysis. We can enter the hydrodynamics menu with this hydrodynamics command. Once we are inside this hydrodynamics menu, 
we can compute linear exciting forces and also radiations with this G pressure command, generate pressure command. Here we can specify the headings and periods at which hydrodynamic properties will be calculated there. And report the result with this VEX forces command and V matrices command. One more option is that all the panels in the BEM solver, boundary element method solver, are interconnected to each other. What I mean is, technically, unlike structural steepness matrix, panels at bow are coupled to the panels at the stone. This takes a lot of additional computation time. But think about our case. We are dealing with kilometers long structures. So it is highly possible that we can ignore some coupling terms between those panels that are apart in long distance. We can control these coupling terms with minus max distance option. What it does is that according to the distance user input on this option, Moses put zeros to the coupling terms to save the analysis time. Uh, this is a kind of a uh, tip of the analysis to reduce the analysis time. And at the end of the hydrodynamics uh, menu, we can export the hydrodynamic database calculated here with this eTotal command. So we do not need to learn this uh, high time consuming analysis every time we run the analysis. I mean, we can just import the hydrodynamic database once it is calculated. Here's a sample plot of the linear exciting forces and hydrodynamic coefficient. These properties will be updated once we connect the mode to a body. Uh, last thing I want to mention here is that uh, hydrodynamic wise, Moses does not deal with fluid domain itself. So for the analysis of fluid domain, I mean the computational fluid dynamics, our company acquired Adinar. This software uh, will be incorporated with Moses in the future. Uh, I just want you to let you know our recent news. The next step is to learn the eigen analysis in the structural solver. We can enter the structural analysis menu with this structural command. Then learn the modal analysis, I mean eigen analysis with this mod command. The number of modes to be extracted can be input with this minus number of evaluation option. One more thing to note here is that when the steepness matrix is formed uh, for modal analysis or any kind of a structural analysis, we have an option. What I mean is here we are dealing with floating structures that is not fixed in the uh, space, in a space. So in a real world, Steepness from boring lines or fenders are used to hold a structure in a space. I mean, uh, because their steepness are determined by shape in water or interaction between the fenders and the body, their steepness are nonlinear, changes in time. So Moses considered this kind of nonlinearity by picking up the steepness at the current position you just specified and adding it to the matrix. However, if there is no fixities or springs, or you do not want to include any kind of steepness effect from connectors or water, we can specify this minus no fix option, no fixities. In this case, if this option is written on this mode command, Moses uses the subspace iteration method suggested by Bess to remove the matrix singularity. For your reference, uh, this subspace iteration is uh, just an uh, iterative method for matrix operation uh, to avoid the singularity. The result of the modal analysis can be investigated in the structural post-processing menu. We can enter the menu with this str post command. With this command, with this mode post command and values, we can get the eigenvalue report and with this mode post vector command, we can check the mode shape. And also visualize the shape uh, with this ampersand picture command. 
And the last step in this structural solver is to assign the number of modes to the body. This can be done with this m percent uh, described body minus generalized degrees of freedom option. So we can specify the individual mode numbers on this option. In other words, only the modes that are defined on this option will be used in hydroelastic analysis. This means that uh, we also can filter the unnecessary mode shape with this option, I mean, such as local mode shape. And this S damping is a structural damping. Here is a sample result of the modal analysis of the semi. The table here shows the natural frequencies for each mode shape, and the picture here are assumed displaced shape of the first three modes. The next step I want to show is to calculate motion areas and learn the uh, stochastic analysis. These types of analysis can be performed in the frequency response menu. Once we connect the modes to the body, as you saw right before in the previous slide, the modes are always used for all the analysis within the body. So we do not need to take any uh, action to include the effect later. Here, with this command RAO, we calculate the motion response operator and report it at the CG with this command FR point. Because we connect the modes to the body, the motion areas from this command includes the older deformation effect. The same for the last. Here, statistics of motions under this wave condition also includes the deformation inertia from the mode, and same for the response spectrum that is calculated with this SP spectrum point command. This is a sample result of the motion areas at the CG of the floater and the motion statistics for each degrees of freedom and motion response spectra. Under the environment, we input on the command. The other type of analysis is the structural analysis in the frequency domain. I would like to say this is the dynamic analysis of floating structures in a structural point of view. In the previous slides, we calculate motion areas and deformation inertia was included there. And then from these motion areas, we can generate the applied force areas with this AKS RAO command and solve the structure against these uh, applied force areas. Then we get the internal force areas with this SSORP command. In the structural post processing menu, we can combine the internal force areas with the wave spectra to get final stresses to be checked against the code requirement such as ASC or Euro, something like that. Here is a sample report. Moses structural post-processor can check the plate UC ratio also. For your reference, Moses has very advanced uh, structural analysis solver specialized for floating structures. So if we want more information, here's the video uh, I prepared. The other choice is the time domain simulation. Again, uh, because we assign the vibration modes to the body, so the body forces at each time step are also computed through the uh, modal superposition technique. Uh, for example, resulting boarding line forces are also updated to hold the elastically behaving floaters. In this way, we can capture the nonlinear effect of the hydroelasticity in time. For structural wise, uh, we can also generate the applied load cases at each time step we want with this L case minus process command. LC13 is just the name of the uh, load case we want to give. And then 13 is a time step. So with this line, we ask Moses to generate the applied load case at time step 13, I mean 13 seconds. 
Then run the structural analysis with this solve command and get the structural structure code checked with this post command. For more information again about the options to generate ro applied road cases from simulation, please refer to the video here. This is all about hydroelastic analysis with Moses. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.